Okay, um, this is chapter 12.2, the walkthrough of the last section that we're going to cover in STAT 190. It deals with the chi-squared test of independence, which is also called homogeneity of proportions. If you remember the uh, <clears throat> z-test for proportions that we did back in chapter 10, this is an extension of that. And you might remember that in chapter 11, we skipped the two sample z test for proportions. I'm sorry, the two sample z test for proportions because we were going to cover it here. And what's great about the chi squared test compared to the z test for proportions is that that looked at two groups. But now that you've seen what the chi squared test of goodness of fit can do, because you've already watched the 12.1 video, hopefully you've also done the MM activity as well. Now you can see, well, we can look at more than just two groups, but we can extend that to as many groups as we need, six colors of M&Ms or whatever. And we can do it for multiple groups. So instead of just being able to do the two groups, two outcomes, so two samples each of a proportion looks at yes or no for two groups, this lets us look at as many kinds of things as we want, so six colors of M&Ms, and as many kinds. So we could compare plain to peanut, but we could also compare plain to peanut to Christmas to peanut butter, I don't know, however many kinds of M&Ms there are. And that um, expansion is actually pretty straightforward and easy to do. So let me pop over here to uh, uh, Wikipedia for a second. And here is just a quick idea of what the story looks like. Um, so you have categories for one variable and categories for another variable. So in this particular example, we have four neighborhoods, A, B, C, and D. We have uh, 650 residents divided up into three kinds of workers, white collar, blue collar, and no collar. And the null hypothesis is that there's independence between the two variables. Now you can't write out the exact null hypothesis, which is sort of unsatisfying, but we just say that the two variables are independent. So the data is counted like that. Now we're going to use that same formula we had before, observe minus expected squared over expected. And we can use that um, to look at our uh, differences. Here's another example. This is data from a previous semester since we didn't really get to eat all the M&Ms together. Everybody got plain M&Ms this time. So um, here's a sample of plain M&Ms and a sample of peanut and M&Ms. And we're not using a hypothesized proportion we're just comparing the two groups to each other. So there were 22 brown M&Ms of plain out of 184, and there were 12 peanut M&Ms out of 67. So is that about the same? Is that close or is that statistically different? Well, we calculate expected the same way, except we have to go in two dimensions. So instead of just saying, right, we're imagining 100 people, 60% of them identify as female, so there we expect 60, 100 times 0.6, we have to do it in two directions. So you'd say 100, times 60% identifies female, times whatever, 40% of Truman students come from the St. Louis area. So 100 times 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.4, that's 24. <clears throat> and we do the same thing here, except of course we have the computer do it for us. So to do that calculation, we just take 34, the column sum, times 184, the row sum, and divide it by 251. Arithmetically, that's annoying, but it's not hard to do if you had a calculator and nothing else to do, or if we had a spreadsheet in front of us, which we do. So now instead of just calculating that for the six colors, we're going to do it for 12, the six colors, times the two kinds of M&Ms that we're looking for. <clears throat> we do observe minus expected squared divided by expected, and we do that here, and you can see that calculation is the same one we did when we are looking at one sample of M&Ms and we repeat it 12 times, we add those up and we get a number of 21. Degrees of freedom, we're going to use that same calculation we used before, categories minus one, except we have to, again, think of it in two directions. So we do rows minus one times columns minus one. So in this case, two minus one is still one. So we still have five degrees of freedom. So our critical value is still 11.07, .07, like we did last time. It's on the other tab. But chi test is a command in uh, spreadsheets, both in Excel or in Google Sheets, that does that for us. And that spits out the p value 0. 0.00079.0008. So that tells us there's an eight in 10 thousandths p 
p-value. The p-value is 0. 0.0008, rounding. Um, that tells us that if plain and peanut M&Ms had the same distribution, we would get that uh, data like this eight ten thousandths of the time. That's super unlikely. So that tells us to reject the null hypothesis. And that tells us that plain and peanut M&Ms do in fact, according to our evidence, have a different distribution. It turns out they have totally different distributions. Um, on that chart that I passed out, you can actually see uh, what those values are, but they're very, very different. All right, let's go to StatCrunch and we'll walk through how to do it here. So I just copied that data over to here, type times all the colors. So here what's weird is if you look, there is no chi-square. <clears throat> we looked at goodness of fit before. I call this the chi-square test of independence. Where we're going to actually look at is tables, and these are called frequency tables. And what we have is a summary. So we're going to select the columns that we want. Interestingly here, we're going to pick all the colors. So there are six columns. Our row labels, which we're just going to do to look at, is called type. We're not going to group it by anything. And we can do the contribution to chi-square if we want to do that. Then we hit compute, blink, and it makes a table that's actually very similar to the one we calculated over here in Google Sheets. 22. Uh, 25 and 0.343. It's a little confusing to read because they smush them all over here. So that 0.34 is a number that we calculated by here. But we can just skip ahead to the punchline and say with five degrees of freedom, because six minus one is five, two minus one is one, five times one is five, we got a calculated value of 21.03, which is what we had. And that gives us a p-value of 0 0.0008, which is what we had before. So in StatCrunch, you can do it without all the rigmarole. You just put in your data and you calculate it. So that's how you do a chi-squared test of independence. It's sometimes called a test of homogeneity of proportions. Homogeneity is whether or not things are mixed evenly or not, right? Milk comes homogeneous, homogenized. And so that is how you do chapter 12.2. This is the last contact uh, content video for the class. Um, so um, with the activity, the M&M activity, that's pretty much the whole semester. So the next time I'll see you will be at the final. Um, remember, it's on Tuesday, December 8th. Um, remember, you'll be on Zoom and on uh, Blackboard slash StackCrunch as you do that. I will have a review session and I'll share information about that as we get uh, closer to there. But um, I hope you like the videos that we did this semester. And um, I know this semester has been weird, but it's been a pleasure uh, having you in stat class and I'll see you at the final. If you have any questions or anything, please do shoot me an email and I will uh, see you there.